readers, reviewers, countrymen. Lend us your ears. <laughs>welcome back to another brothers gwyn video today we'll be talking about our june tbr we're a bit late um but anyway we still want to do it and we've got quite a lot that we want to get through this month so absolutely let's just dive straight in very well so first of all i am currently reading artifact space by christian slash miles cameron now as you know i'm a massive fan of mr cameron um, he's a great, great author, and this is his first foray into sci-fi. Uh, now, being someone who's not really all hot on the sci-fi at the moment, um, I've actually been really looking forward to reading this because I know that I'm a massive fan of Christian Cameron. This will show me whether I actually I'm a big fan of sci-fi. I've read Dune, I've read Rise, uh, Red Rising, I've read Red Red Rising, Children um, of Time, uh, yeah, Children of Time as well, and you know I really enjoyed those. So, and I think I'm really looking forward to seeing. Um, how Christian Cameron does, Miles Cameron does, uh, with his sci-fi. I know that he's been really excited about it, and we're really looking forward to chatting to him yeah, soon uh, in an interview um, about uh, his whole process about with writing Artifact Space. So far, I love it. I'm about halfway through. It's fantastic. His characters are excellent. This is the first female um, POV that he has written, and I think he's doing a really, really good job, and I think readers are going to be really surprised uh, pleasantly surprised with how actually amazing this whole sci-fi book is because we know Miles Cameron is a lover of history and he's actually uh, managed to feed his love of history and his sword play and all that kind of stuff into his writing now within a sci uh, sci-fi world which I didn't expect at all so this is excellent get this on your pre-orders folks yeah I will also be reading Artifact Space this month I, I'm going to be starting it in a few days once I finish one of my reads that I will mention later on as Ed said Miles Cameron is a master, especially of world building. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does um, in the sci-fi genre. You said that he carries that detail that he brings into this book. So I'm really looking forward to it. I am currently reading uh, Tennyson's Poetry, which is a Norton Critical Edition. Uh, I love these Norton Critical Editions because they have really nice essays and footnotes um, throughout the book as well. Um, all about the different poems here. And uh, Tennyson is, uh, from what I've read so far, about 80 pages in, a beautiful poet. I studied him a little bit at school with Charge of the Light Brigade. Mm -hmm. um, my aim with reading some of these Norton critical editions is to um, read some poets that portray war as heroic and then some other poets that portray um, war as not so heroic. So you get the balance. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you introduced me to Byron recently. We went over there, had a cup of tea with him, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't really think a cup of tea <laughs> is probably Byron's... Uh, Probably more than gin. Mate, I think probably a cup Byron. of opium, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting to Byron soon, which is great. Uh, but Tennyson, I'm loving it so far. Um, I just read uh, his translation when he was 11 years old of Claudian's Prosopine, which oh. is just beautiful. When you hear what Phenomenal. these poets did when they're just children, so young. it's crazy to um, think that, well, I'm 18 yeah. or 24. <laughs> and just to think that. So he was 13 yeah. years younger than you. Thanks, Will. It's like when you watch the Olympics and everyone's 16 winning gold medals <laughs> and you're sitting at home on the sofa eating a tub of Ben and Jerry's. Like... <laughs> so, yeah. But I'm loving this so far. I'd really recommend reading a bit of poetry. He has such a way with words. So Tennyson is a bit of a legend in my book. And also very sorry to the Broken Bindings bookmark they kindly sent me. It's been eaten by lamb. Not many people can say that, but I promise <laughs> it's true. And now I have actually already read in June and finished an audible Priest of Bones by Peter McLean. This is the first instalment in Peter McLean's fantasy War for the Rose Throne. It is a cross between Peaky Blinders and The Godfather, in my opinion. Um, it's got those key, th uh, key themes of family, sacrifice, and there's just danger lurking behind every doorway in this urban setting. So is that Joe Fletcher book? Sorry. Yeah, it is. So I think this is actually the first book by Joe Fletcher books that I've actually... Wicked child. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I'll stop Sorry about that. that. Um, okay. I'm Will, going to read, I've you need to read there. more Joe Fletcher. I'm going to redeem myself. So, obviously, I've read this. <laughs> I'm going to read more by Peter McLean. I don't slap I you in I every video. What? It's a Blackadder reference, okay? So, you can't... it's not me slapping him. Oh, so it's... that's what you say when you slap people every day. No, when no, they no. complain. Oh, no, no, it's Blackadder reference. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Hey, this one, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a massive sword with a sting, maybe, in your hands. Um, okay. Anyway, reeling from that, I, I am going to redeem myself reading *The Great Coats* by Sebastian Singh. I've read his *Spellslinger* series, but that is by 
Hot Key books, I think. Is um, I'm oh, great you would enjoy Joe that. Brasty Goodbow is so funny. I've heard so much you about Brasty. Him. Yeah. But anyway, sidetracked for a bit. Let's get back to Priest of Brains. Um, this is fantastic. It's Peaky Blinders, but in a medieval period. I mean, can you get any more <laughs> awesome? And I've also actually already finished Priest of Lies in, in June already. Um, this is the sequel to Priest of Bones, so the second instalment in War for the Rose Throne by Peter McLean. It conti it's meant to be continuing with the same tone, but the world is built on, um, and you explore more of this world in politics and the actual setting as well. So uh, I'm going to be. Li I listened to this on Audible again, and it was really great. I'll be talking more about my thoughts on both of these at the end of the month when we talk about our Read of June. We will. And the only thing I'm, I'm a little bit upset about with this series is that no one ever says, all right, Tommy. <laughs> I mean, that might be a bit too close to Maybe, Peaky Blinders. Yeah, fair but... enough, okay. And talking of Mr. Peter McLean, uh, it seems like we are the McLean boys this month. <laughs> um, I am also going to be reading Priest of Gallows, which is book three of War for the Rose Throne. Um, I'm currently listening to it right now, uh, narrated again by David Morley Hale. That is right. Very good. Um, and uh, it's excellent so far. I'm loving it. It's really great. It's so good just to get back into this world. I've noticed straight away um, how great of a writer Peter McLean is, um, how easy it is to follow along with the story, and how easy it is to get sucked into um, Thomas Piety's narration, um, how you're seeing all of the events play out from behind his eyes. Uh, and I just love how you know the surprises unfold, uh, how the action is portrayed, and how gritty the world is. I think you know this is definitely grim yeah. dark. I think, um, but Thomas Piety is an excellent character, and definitely, as William said, um, mega mega Peaky Blinders vibes here. Now, loads of reviewers that I really trust, uh, really rate highly, have actually given this great rating so far. Uh, which is a really, really good sign. Yeah, I actually saw on Petrick's monthly summary, I think he gave Priest of Gallows his book of the month. I don't know why I had the massive pause there. <laughs> I think he gave Priest of Gallows his book of the month. Oh, which, nice, cool. From Petrick, the amount he reads. Is a big thing. I do not know how he gets through so much. Yeah. And that is a big I thing. I think so. Petrick's actually in this book. Uh, I think there's a character called <laughs> I've Petrick. heard about this. I think he dies a very brutal death. Um, so it proper Peter McLean's. I don't know if I say compliment or insult to you, Patrick. <laughs> yeah. I think he's just happy to be in the book. Yeah, so. I would be. <laughs> and another book that I've already actually finished oh, on off. Audible <laughs> this month is Red Rising. I was really looking forward to diving into this. Another sci-fi read. I've, I haven't actually read much sci-fi, but no. it seems that June is going to be Baptism the month. by Mercury. <laughs> Red Rising, so obviously the it's renowned series by Piers Brown. This is meant to be a bit of, it plays a bit off the idea of Hunger Games, mm -hmm. um, but with a more of a grittier... First one does anyway. Yeah, uh, more of a grittier, grimmer tone than Hunger Games. And so I was really looking forward to diving into this and it lived up to my expectations. And again, I'll talk more about my thoughts on this at the end of the month. And another book I will be listening to an Audible this month is Vindolanda by Adrian Goldsworthy. Now, uh, you might have seen Adrian Goldsworthy did a little video for us uh, on his upcoming release, The Fort, which I believe is out now uh, when this video is going live. Um, and it, he is a, a historical fiction author and he's written about uh, the Roman period. OK, and Vindolanda is the first trilogy. Um, before the fort and I when I saw that video I was like this sounds so up my street yeah. I need to read he this. He really sold it. Absolutely and um, I know that he's a very very highly esteemed um, historical historian. <laughs> there you go <laughs> I was thinking hang on a minute. Um, he, yeah, He's a, a really great historian and I'm looking forward to reading lots of his non-fiction as well but I thought I would go straight into his historical fiction because I really want to get to the fort. Sounds a little bit like Centurion that kind of thing. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this. I've heard great things, so cannot wait. And whilst I'm talking about Red Rising and Pierce Brown, I might as well go straight on to Golden Sun. Which, oh! Again, I'm going to say, this is the last time I'm saying in this video. I've already read it whilst we're recording this video. So this is the second instalment of the original Red Rising trilogy. And it follows on a few years after the ending of Red Rising. Um, I can't really say too much and I'll talk again. I'll talk more about it at the end of the month. It's really hard to keep stim right now. Mm -hmm. I just really want to talk about it, but this is a TBR video and not about our thoughts. So for now, so I will be reading Golden Sun and June. 
And here it is, folks. I'm finally diving into Christian Cameron's whole Greek backlog. Uh, I've been just waiting for the right moment when I've been really feeling like I'm desperate to read uh, anything in that kind of Greek setting. Obviously, mm. Christian Cameron's the first one I'll go to before, you know, Con Igudan, before... Uh, Stephen Pressfield before anyone whatsoever. That is high praise. High praise, absolutely. Um, and uh, this is Dad's favourite series uh, by Christian Cameron and we know that Dad is a massive, massive fan of Christian Cameron. So I think uh, I'm really going to love this. Uh, it's a one, again, a book that I know, I knew straight away as soon as I even read the title when Dad bought it for me a few years ago. Um, I just knew I was going to love it straight away. But um, I'm finally at the stage of reading it now. Uh, and I think uh, Aramnestos is going to be a great character. It's uh, all centred around the, the Battle of Marathon. I believe it's the Peloponnesian War. Um, there was actually going to be a big reenactment in Greece this July yeah. um, for I think the two and a half thousandth um, anniversary of the Battle of Marathon. I think it's 490 BC around then. Um, uh, at uh, the seventh hour. On <laughs> yeah. the, uh, anyway, but um, so uh, but unfortunately, it won't go ahead this year. So hopefully next year, um, I'll be able to don some bronze armor, get on some nice plumed helmets, uh, and do a little bit of phalanx work. But who knows? But anyway, Killer of Men will be read in June. And a few weeks ago, we held on the, the channel a vote for what series of videos you would like mm -hmm. us to do. So one was about films. And so the overwhelming majority voted for us to review Tarantino films. And for books, it was for us to read and review each book one at a time, and then do a video about our favorite ranking, our ranking our favorites. Yeah. yeah. And that was Joe Abercrombie. Thank you. So Ed, yes, you've actually already read everything by Joe Abercrombie. Not so... quite everything. Not quite everything. Okay. Nearly. Nearly everything. Maybe. Nearly. Uh, <laughs> maybe again. Every video. Um, but so I will be having my introduction to Gerbil Crombie this month. This is a read I've been looking forward to for so I, long. I just know so you're going to love it. I've put off the blade itself for a while because I've been waiting just a bit like with Killer of Men. Mm, the, right when, the right moment where I didn't want it to be rushed. Yeah. Um, this is, I love this copy. This is actually, um, I got this from the Broken Binding with the natural book plate signed by <gasps> Joe himself. Why am I singing in videos recently? I, should, <laughs> I know. I should not be doing that with my voice. Um, Brilliant's got talent. Here you oh, come. yeah. <laughs> uh, but Joe Abercrombie, <laughs> this is my introduction to singing. Um, I'm really looking forward to the blade itself. It's grimmed up and it is meant to be iconic with some of the best characters, in the, not just in the genre, but ever, with people like Galoxa, yeah. um, Jezel. He's, he's the goat. And Logan. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to diving into this. I cannot say how much... I feel like I'm going to love this. I mean, this is one of those that you just know that you're just going to enjoy every single moment of it. Yep. And as soon as William has finished reading this, um, just be aware that this channel would become a first law channel. <laughs> Nothing else. First law content only. <laughs> Sorry. So we'll be doing a review of this straight after I finish. So yes. hopefully you're looking forward to that. Uh, so I will be reading The Blade itself in June. And talking of Lord Grimdark himself, I will be then rereading The Heroes. Uh, I absolutely adored this book when I read this. I think it's actually probably my favourite standalone. Is um, this the one with Gorst? Yes. Now, Gorst is my favourite character to ever be on the page. Uh, <laughs> and he is very prevalent in The Heroes, I will say. Uh, and I just, I think this book's absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait to reread it again. Um, it's, well, let's see on the back, it says three men. One battle, no heroes. Uh, so that's so Dravel Um The heroes is actually a place rather than a group of people, okay. um, which is really cool. I like that idea. And it, I think Joe's inspired by a war film with Sean Connery. I cannot remember for the life of me now what the name of the film is, but I know that he was inspired by three different films for each of his standalones. Um, I think it's a bridge too far. The Heroes, um, with Sean Connery, Michael Caine. It's a war film uh, about one battle told from both point of views, both sides of the battle. And that's exactly what The Heroes is. Uh, it's it's tip-top Joe Abercrombie writing. His writing is fantastic. It's so golden. You know, there's always just a phrase that I just have to write down. I just think that is just, how has he worded that so well? It's so pragmatic and direct, but it's also brilliant, you know. Um, and I absolutely love it. I think Joe Abercrombie deserves to be way higher on the fantasy, you know, kind of standings right now where than he actually is. I think he's definitely George R. R. Martin um, level. Absolutely. I think he's, you know, one of the best writers full stop in any genre I've read. So... Joe Abercrombie. So did you cannot got wait. through this on audiobook last time. Yes. So yeah. are you reading it physically this time? Oh, yeah. So you want to get both sides of the coin? Oh yeah. 
And is um, a bridge too far? Is that about Arnhem? Is that World War Two? Oh yeah. Ah. Okay. Sure. Oh, I need yeah. to. I need to watch that then. <laughs> Now, getting away from the uh, fantasy and science fiction genre, I'll be continuing with Bernard Cornwell's Saxon stories with the Lords of the North. So this is the third instalment of the series. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Um, uh, this is the series that has been adapted into The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really looking forward to this because I thought the first instalment, which is actually called The Last Kingdom, was great, really great. Yeah. But I thought that... The Pearl Horseman, which was the sequel, the one just before this, was absolutely fantastic. Bernard Cornwall had already established his characters, and I feel like he felt he just had that freedom to just go with whatever he wanted. Yeah. And it really paid off, and it was absolutely brilliant. So I'm hoping that continues with Lords of the North. And this is the first half of what season two is in The Last Kingdom. So when I read this and the fourth instalment, I'll be re-watching season two of The Last Kingdom. So I'm really looking forward to that. And Bernard Cornwell, he's one of my favourite authors out there. So I really just cannot wait for this. And so. you meet a great character in this, one of my favourites. Is it Finnan? No, that's in like book six. Don't get your hopes up. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> The Laws of the North, Bernard Cornwell, I'll be reading in June. Now, anyone who knows me knows that a month without a Western Inn is not a month. It's a failure. Um, so, A Congregation of Jackals is my next oh, Western read. Before you go further, what, what a, a name. great name. What a great title. Now, this is actually written, fun fact for you here, um, by the director of Bone Tomahawk. Um, so, we did a video, a, uh, some of our favourite films uh, video recently, uh, and Bone Tomahawk was on my list. Uh, I was actually recommended this by a viewer, so thank you very much. Um, that A Congregation of Jackals is written by the author. You might be able to hear a lamb in the background. Uh, that is Edith, so say hello in the comments. <laughs> she will be reading them later. Um, but A Congregation of Jackals, it's about a an ex-member of a gang gets invited to um, as a, for a re reunion at a wedding of one of the gang members, and then it all, all goes down um, something creek, I will say. <laughs> Um, that's what I've heard anyway. Uh, but I think if S. Craig Zala has a grasp on uh, the language of the 19th century as he does in Bone Tom Hawk, then I think I'm just going to adore this book, even if nothing happens, even if it's just a whole long conversation. The way he puts <laughs> phrases together um, is just beautiful. And the dialogue it, is just so good. There are so many phrases that... I just I sit there and think, how on earth do you come up with that? Unless you were actually, you know, do you have you, do you know someone from the nineteenth <laughs> century? Is this like Night of the Museum or something? I mean, probably not the best time insult, travel. Yeah. Um, you can imagine anything. Night of the Museum. <laughs> but yeah, great film anyway. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be a good western and a cool cover. Great director and even greater title. And another Audible listen that I'll be having this month. I've had a lot. I think this is the month where the sun's out. Um, Guns finish, out. Finish my... Get your bloody bums out. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, sorry. Anyway, the sun's out. We can go outside. I've finished my assessments now. Yay. Um, so I'm going to be sitting in the sun, making the most of it, listening to those audible books. I've already got through four. And another one will be The Righteous by David Ragg. Nice. David Ragg, if you want to listen to a sales pitch for The Righteous, you can... Uh, uh, look at our video of June releases where David Rag sells it himself and it worked because I'm listening to the sequel. Yeah, when he said um, fruit-based cocktails, I was like, I'm, I'm definitely in... reading it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so The Righteous is a second instalment in David Rag's series and I really enjoyed The Black Hawks. So, and it's narrated by Colin Macy. I really enjoyed his narration of The Black Hawks as mm -hmm. well. So I'm really looking forward to just diving in. It came out a few days ago. So if you're interested, go buy it on audiobook, physical, any way you want and if you haven't read the black hawks get on that now um so i'll really be oh you got a book that is similar to black hawks what, what do they remind you of um the cover is beautiful in some ways it reminds me of kings of the wild um Ooh. i mean the cover is actually quite similar to yeah they kings are of the wild as well uh, it's kind of that um camaraderie of a gang quite humorous you know so it's that kind of tone and atmosphere yeah although there are some very big differences as well but obviously they're similar in some ways so if you really enjoyed Kings of the Wild, check out the Black Hawks as well and see if it takes your fancy. And another Norton um, book that I hopefully I will be getting to this month is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Um, now, I know obviously this is a massive classic um, and I, 
uh, basically I'm trying to, with my writing, try and be as authentic to the 19th century as possible, um, as I'm writing a 19th century inspired um, fantasy book. And I think the language in Moby Dick will definitely be a golden ticket for me here. But also, I, you know, I, I've seen comparisons with Moby Dick to Blood Meridian uh, by Cormac McCarthy. And I've heard a character in this book, I think his name's Ahab, um, it reminds people of the judge from Blood Meridian that he is, you know, um, kind of nearing on evilness or uh, being obsessed like the with the personification of death. And... Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that, I, I might have heard that wrong, but that's what I think anyway. But there are lots of comp comparisons here with Moby Dick uh, and Blood Meridian. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. It's obviously um, a classic, a book that people say everyone should read at some point in their lives. And I'm really looking forward to it. And this month I will be finishing Wolf 4. I've been reading this for quite a while now and it's taken me quite a while to get through but that is not because it isn't it isn't good. It is fantastic. It's living up to be one of my favourite reads of 2021 so far. What it is is assessment slow me down but also Wolf 4 is a book that you can't just read through quickly. Like you mm. can big books like The Faith and the Fall and you can get through in a few sittings yep. because they're so easy to read. Yeah. But Wolf 4, you have to read it in chunks and then just mould it you have to sit in a dark room for a while <laughs> just mould over what is going on um but it is fantastic at the moment it's thomas cromwell is living out to be one of the best characters that i have had the pleasure to follow in any book of any genre and this has lived up to my expectations so it is follows the perspective of thomas cromwell in the 16th 16th century sorry finding hard to speak now sorry. um and he is put into the tudor court which good luck <laughs> good, good yeah, luck good indeed. luck mate he's going to need it but he's an incredible intelligent man but even then this is a very dangerous world to live in and it is very interesting following these politics and Hilary Mantel does it in such an engaging, interesting way. So I'm really looking forward to how Wolf Hall concludes. Did she win the Booker for this one? She did. Um, and she won it for the sequel, the second installment in the series, Bring Up the Bodies as well. Wow. So it's very highly acclaimed. And so good, I was I felt a bit tense going into this because everyone said this is right up your street, Will. Um, but it's, it has lived up to my expectations. And as I said, cannot wait to see how Wolf Hall ends. And a book that I have actually finished this month uh, on Audible <laughs> is The Black Tongue Thief by Christopher Buellman. Uh, it's actually narrated on Audible by Christopher Buellman himself. Um, I think he's American, but he does a beautiful Irish accent all through the book, which is fantastic. The central character, Kinch, uh, is one of the best protagonists I've ever read. Um, but it's very similar to Kings of the Wild with the humour, um, although I think the humour is a little bit different in this. It's more about the main character being funny rather than, obviously, Kings of the Wild. Clay Cooper isn't really the, the hilarious one out of the group, he's is he? He's a solid one. He's yeah. the, the stoic guy. <laughs> um, but here, Kinch is just geniusly funny and it's 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 brilliant uh it's also it tugs at the heartstrings it's a really nice really good story if you like kings of the world that classic fantasy um inspired D, D kind of stuff then you'll really enjoy this a good quest really good characters a nice cast as well um there is a bit of time on a boat in this one um which i'm not usually too keen on but this was great but anyway we'll i'll talk more about this at the end of june but i would definitely recommend this this only came out in may this year i think it's gonna be a really big debut and a really yeah. uh, pushing fantasy on in a really positive way which is great so i really recommend this one so far and the final audible book i will be getting to this month is the serpent sword by matthew harvey now matthew harvey is a great great author um i've read a couple books of his i've actually read one of his books in the bernicia chronicles which the serpent sword is actually in um but i read book eight um because it was coming out and i took it as you I, do as you do i took it like um kind of the bird of cormar standalones you know you can dip and dive into them where you want to um i got a taste for matthew harvey's writing i thought this is a really nice style and what i thought the only thing that i thought about the book was that i wish i was a bit more attached to the main character which obviously i would be if i actually read book one like a normal <laughs> human being anyway um so sorry matthew harvey uh, i am going to book one now but well, the wolf of wessex is a standalone that i listened to um at the beginning of this year and i thought it's excellent uh, and i'm really looking forward to this and the last book that i'm aiming to read in this rather ambitious reading month is Master of Sorrows by Justin Travis Cole. This was his debut. I've heard some really great things about it and I actually don't know much about what thing. it's about. Yeah. Um, but 
I a lot of reviewers that I really trust have just heaped praise upon praise upon praise upon this. Um, so I'm really looking forward to listening to this again on Audible. So can't really say much more, but it's something that I'm aiming to get round to in June. So Master of Sorrow is the last read that I'm aiming to read in June. A lot of Audible risk listens this month. It you know, is. The sun is out, the Euros are on. We're going to be watching the Euros yeah, whilst listening to some books as well. So there's an hour and a half here and there, yeah. which is very cool. So very good. We are we love our Audible uh, reads slash listens. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a really good month, isn't it? It is. And the final book, I'll, well, comic I'll be reading this month is Wolverine, Old Man Logan. Now, Dad recently read this and he said it's phenomenal. It's grimdark. And we all know that I like my grimdark, as I do write for Grift Up magazine on occasion. Um, and the whole premise of this is just fantastic. I won't go into the details because there's lots of surprises and shocks here. But um, I've, I've read this, uh, read a few pages here and there. Um, throughout the month so far I'm just taking it very slowly uh, and it's brilliant the artwork is fantastic that all these illustrations are so bloody and gory but really dark as well and the story so far seems so original and very similar to the film Logan uh, where it feels quite hopeless um, but I you know I think there's uh, some really cool threads going through this at the moment that I'm really looking forward to seeing how they play and how they pan out there's some mean looking Hulk children at the bottom here we have Hawkeye as well uh, and Hawkeye is a pretty cool dude um, apart from in the Avengers films but anyway I'm looking forward to this one and that is the end, the conclusion of our June to be read video. A little bit late, but uh, we thought we'd keep everyone in the loop what we were hoping to be reading this month. Let us know if you've read any of these books, guys, please. Um, let us know in the comments below uh, if you have any recommendations based on yeah. any of these books. You know, I'd love to read any more, um, any more hilarious books, such as The Black Tongue Thief. I've been meaning to try Terry Pratchett at some point. I know that he's got a really um, great sense of humour running through his books. So um, let us know, guys, in the comments. Yeah, um, I mean, we're both being quite ambitious this month. I think we've yeah. got 10 books in each of our piles. Aim high, why not? Aim high, yeah, definitely. Um, so we're looking forward to in a few weeks talking about these reads. There's a few that I've already finished that I'm really looking forward to sharing my thoughts on. So for now, truth and courage, the brothers grin. Truth and courage. <laughs>